John Birmingham. I'm a visual artist based in Dungarvan in County Waterford in the south of Ireland. And uh, last year I created um, a series of images entitled Think About the Future. And uh, it was based on things that were going on at the time, things that were in the news, things that were happening around um, where I live. And uh, in that sense, even though it was called Think About the Future, it, it was really about taking the things that were happening at the moment to a conceptual extreme and um, the the main images that I'm going to talk about today were images that uh, formed a panel that I was awarded my associateship in photography with the Irish Photographic Federation in September last year. So the spark for the whole idea really came from one tree stump. Um, at the time, there was a lot of talk uh, locally and uh, on social media and everything about trees that were being cut down in, in towns around the country. And there was one tree in particular, this tree stump here, that's uh, near where I live. When I saw it, and I saw it, it had been cut down and there was a man-made birdhouse had been put on it. And it was the irony of that that struck me, the idea that, you know, you've cut down a tree, but you've put this man-made um, bird feeder uh, onto the stump. And I went out and I photographed it, and I knew I, knew I was going to use it in something, but at, um, when I photographed it, I didn't know exactly the, where it was going to lead to in terms of the, the, the whole idea. So... What I started thinking about was maybe there was this character that was wandering through um, a sort of a dystopian world and sort of seeing remnants of the past or which is our present um, in different places and that that's kind of where the the whole idea started so on this I, I photographed this tree stump the I put a little spring like the um, uh, bird feeder is, is sort of popping off the, the tree here. So this is where the, the whole idea started and I was thinking about you know man obviously cutting things down and clearing natural areas for man-made constructions and the uh, the little bird feeder being put on this this cut down tree was um, I thought sort of represented that and this is the, the little character going through so following on from that, I have my character here again, um, and in you know going around with uh, goggles and a breathing mask, carrying a, a tank of oxygen. You know, and obviously here she's got this pop-up book with uh, trees. So there's um, an area near me here where there's an oyster farm and there's constantly tractors and stuff going over and back to the oyster cages and um, so I, I saw these tracks one day and I just liked the fact that it looked like there was um, uh, two different, well there, there was two different uh, tires on the, the tractor or the trailer and that kind of made me think that again you know things are sort of breaking down that this it isn't just um, nature that is is suffering, but um, things are sort of everything is sort of deteriorating, and the you know it's kind of uh, improvised repairs. So it's sort of a, a damaged future. And there was also an idea, and it um, it's something that comes up in in uh, some of the other images as well. The the idea of the things that we have here now becoming like legend or fairy tales or myth. So this image here, again, following um, the character that's kind of journeying through the uh, this dystopic future. The previous summer I'd heard someone say, oh, I'd love to go for a few cans on the beach. And I just, the, for some reason, the phrase kind of stuck with me and with this, I was kind of imagining that in the future, have um, the few cans on the beach would be uh, cans of oxygen. Obviously, there's industrial pollution going on here in the background, and our uh, our subject hanging out. 
One of the things, obviously, that was in the news an awful lot was to do with plastic pollution. And um, one of the things I was thinking about was stuff like plastic contamination in food and that we were consuming pieces of plastic, microplastics and things like that. And in this, the, um, the baby is meant to represent a certain kind of naivety in the sense that, you know, we were consuming this stuff and we didn't know we were ingesting plastic and there was plastic getting into the oceans and into fish and, um, also, the baby is born into this world that's permeated by plastic pollution. And one of the things that I was um, I was trying to do was was make sure that the baby didn't look like it was in distress in any way. The idea is that the baby has been born into this and is oblivious to the uh, the state of the world that it's been born into. One of the things that I was doing with the panel was I, I had sister images, so th some of the images were connected thematically. So in this one, it's um, a globe, and obviously it's like a plastic bag, and we've got lots of uh, rubbish, and the subjects are, you know, drowning and suffocating in the uh, the plastic pollution. Another thing that was in the news at the time was the sharing of people's information and personal data. So I had an, an idea for an image called Data Harvest. And what I wanted to do with this was to um, reference a painting called The Angelus by Jean-Francois Millet, um, because I wanted to sort of give the idea of the, the harvest. And in this, the, the two characters have stopped there's a church here in the background and the idea is that they've, they've stopped because the the angelus is ringing out and you know they've got their um their crops here in the, in in their basket and in my image i created a field of usb ports and in the background here instead of a church i have these uh communications masts and the idea being that uh you know they're they're out here harvesting data so you know they've got their wheelbarrow here with their usb stick and their basket is full of ones and zeros like um binary information so again here this is like um a sister image to the the data harvest image and with a slightly uh religious connotation in the sense that i'm taking the idea of the maypole um, but in, on this, instead of dancing around the maypole with ribbons, we've got these children. They're all connected with their smartphones to uh, a pole with USB ports. And they're dancing around it. And again, in the background here, the idea of um, sort of communication masts. Uh, This image, A Pale of Air, um, was partly inspired by the title of a short science fiction story by um, Fritz Lieber. And in the story, there's a family that are living underground and they have to go and they collect ice to bring down and melt in order, in order to, um, to get breathable air. So what I did in this one is... Um, you know, I've got this bell jar here, and um, I photographed this old busted up um, petrol pump. And we have our characters, is the idea is that she's filling her oxygen tank from the, uh, the, the tree here in the bell jar. And you can see there's um, a father and, and child carrying theirs away and the, uh, what I was trying to suggest there was that like this is like the new normal for the people in this uh, dystopia um, and again I've got these communication masts 
dotted throughout the um, the landscape. So this image again, it's um, the title is kind of a play on like a, a an airplane flight recorder or, or um, like a record of flight, and the idea again came from you know the the whole idea that these five G masks were um, having a, an impact on birds where they were put up. So in this we've got um our, our um we've got our archaeologist of the future um obviously using a smartphone and is scanning the skeleton of a bird and is uh getting a a holographic representation of what the bird was and what it used to do in this image i was just um Again, you know, they're in a, a wasteland and, uh, you know, I, I was thinking about, I've been, I've been reading that um, drones were going to be used for things like deliveries and I was just sort of imagining that at some point in the future, you know, will there be a bunch of drones just flying around in the sky and again, it'll just, you know, become the norm um and obviously you know with things like bees and insects and stuff dying out um i just had the idea of having children out playing with nets but instead of trying to catch butterflies they're chasing these drones that are are flying around so in time and tide i wanted to represent um you know sea life uh in a, a, a single image and also I wanted to give the idea that these things that could die out and that could disappear would become as myth like fairy tales or um, folklore so I have a mermaid representing um, sea life and in here I just I have her caught up in you know tangled in, in, in ropes and stuff like we see um, a lot of sea creatures tangled in, in man-made stuff and I just I like the idea of having you know kids have come across this and they're kind of poking it with a stick and down here I put in this little little clock and and stuck this plastic bottle on it kind of representing like uh, the age of plastic. So this image, the family that breathes together, it's a play on the expression, the family that prays together stays together. And I kind of, I had the idea of maybe, you know, it's, it's like they're sitting around the table ready to say grace, but instead of a meal, they've got these little canisters of clean breathable air I didn't want to put uh, like a crucifix on the wall but I, I, I wanted to give you know some sort of um, hint of religion this image Rhapsody for Water um, I was just trying to think about you know what scenes might look like on, on the street of this um, conceptual world that I, that I was imagining and so I, I thought about you know there was a someone busking but instead of getting coins or cash thrown into their, their bucket, you have someone actually pouring clean, drinkable water. And you can see here, I, I made this little poster. Um, obviously, you know, like a mobile phone contract of, of today. Uh, you know, all you can breathe air with your um, contractual obligations. Um, Obviously, one of the things we keep hearing about is the um, the depletion of the the bee population, and um, <clears throat> I wanted to feature that in the in the panel. So I have some beekeepers here, and you know their hives are kind of falling apart, and they're empty. There's no bees around, and in the background, you know we have these drones here, which is kind of a play on the idea of um, worker bees and drones. Um, so I have the I have the um, the drones here are 
you know spraying uh, pesticide or something and as it turns out this year we've seen drones used for disinfecting areas in China um, because of the coronavirus the final image on the panel what have we done I have a guy in a suit sitting amongst all these chopped down trees and the title is meant to be slightly ambiguous in the sense that he could be saying what have we done he could be saying what have we done in the sense that you know I didn't do anything you know um, so that and, and also his expression I mean the idea was that you know you're not really meant to know whether he's happy or sad about it um, you know he's he's kind of he's got his hat off almost like he's mourning but in terms of the placement of where he he is on the panel the idea i had was that he's kind of got his back to all of this to everything else that's happening so he's either you know turned his back on it and is is ignoring it or is just oblivious to it you know and and so the idea was kind of you know that that question because you can ask you know well what have I done? What did I do to cause it? Or you can ask, what have I done or what am I doing to improve the situation? So that was my Think About the Future series. Um, and thanks for listening.